Ladies and gents, this video is sponsored by EA, so a big thanks to them, as always, for supporting the channel. Is this you? Are you struggling to get out of the lowest tiers in Ranked? Are you a Piss off. Platinum player or a Hard Stuck Masters player? Well then do I have good news for you because today not only do we have the best most guaranteed way of gaining RP in Apex Legends Season 9 but we're also going to be teaching you how you can become a better player for seasons to come. Yes, even you Bronze Bennies, Silver Samuels and Gold Garys. Gold Garys? will become better Apex Legends ranked players if you follow this guide correctly and apply it into your own game. Losing is fun. That's why I do it. Right. So yeah, as you can see, I made Apex Pred once again after about a week of Season 9 being out and I still kind of feel late. But me and the boy Mega Tutti over here... We've all been playing ranked for a decent amount of time this season already for the past week and we've been applying the strats used in this video to gain RP and I just wanted to show you guys that it does work, we are gaining a good amount of RP and you guys can be doing the same if you follow the tactics and tips in this video. The areas of focus that we're going to be talking about in today's video include team composition, play styles, rotations, loadouts, the art of third partying, game sense, mentality and also we're going to touch on something else at the end of the video which I don't really want to talk about now but you'll see why. But before we get into the first tip, it appears that 87% of you who watch the channel aren't subscribed, so if you're new here, please drop me a sub. The channel is really, really cool, I, I promise. But as promised, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the team composition for Season 9's Ranked, and I'm sure most of you will remember the horrendous legend meta that we had in Season 8 Split 1. The hunt is on. <laughs> Ugh, God. Fortunately though, this season we're on the best map in the game for Ranked. World's Edge is unanimously agreed upon as the best map for Ranked as it is the most versatile and offers the most options when it comes to your team comp. You can run so many different team comps on this map and still be really effective at gaining RP. This is proved by the fact that we went through half of Diamond with me playing Crypto. Boys, boys, I'm gonna take a video with Crypto. Can you say EMP, EMP inbound? My teammates on Wraith and Bangalore before switching up to a little bit more of an aggressive comp with Pathfinder involved and we still gained a really good amount of RP whichever which way we played. Now this doesn't mean you can't still run the Devil's Trio of Octane, Bloodhound and Revenant. But that comp isn't going to be as strong as it was on the likes of King's Canyon due to the way that the map plays. World's Edge is a very inclusive map in general so you can kind of adapt to any playstyle that you want to if you really want to try hard enough. I always find it's really important to have a recon character in your team composition, someone like Crypto or Pathfinder so that you can scan those recon beacons and get those nice early rotations going at the start of the game. Having a character that is really strong in combat is also really useful, someone like Bangalore or Pathfinder or even Bloodhound can really help swing those 3v3 fights in your favour. And a legend that can support the team and help them in any which way is also really good. Gibraltar is obviously really strong again on this map, as he always is in pretty much every ranked split, but a character like Wraith to help you reposition is also really useful, so it really comes down to what you value the most and what you want the most out of your team. My advice is to go with your gut for the first few games with your team and see exactly how that you are approaching games and how you're playing games, and then kind of work around that and if you feel like your legend composition isn't working, you can switch it up at any given point. The team comp that we best found suited us at the end of the day was Bangalore, Pathfinder and Wraith and I think that's most likely what we're going to stick to for the rest of the season but don't be surprised if you do catch us in games playing other legends because sometimes things just don't work out and you need to switch it up in order to start getting those gains. So when it comes down to playstyles, there's a bunch of different ways that you can play the map and a lot of that does depend on your team composition but it mostly depends in fact on who you are as a player and how you like to play the game as a player. You can play ranked in aggressive ways, defensive ways, passive ways or even just to play for third parties. It really just depends on how you want to approach the game. For example, there are always these really mechanically skilled players who are out there who absolutely frag out every game and get these big kill, big damage games in ranked. But these players get caught out quite often because they'll overcommit to fights that they shouldn't really be taking 
and they're not thinking about placement or positioning, or even their RP. I mean, they're just thinking about getting kills. I mean, fair play, I guess. On the other hand, you'll have players who like to take positioning and hold down an area until the end game because they know that they've got the best positioning in the game. These players might not end up having the most KP at the end, but they may also be the most likely to win the game just based on their positioning alone. It's usually good to have a mix of both types of players on the team to find a balance, but if you don't have that, then you should always play to your strengths. Now for us, we found the best way to gain RP this season to be landing safe, but always keeping an eye on teams nearby especially if there's more than one landing near us, and what we'll do is we'll loot up and look to third party that as soon as possible. That way we can guarantee ourselves some points for the early game in case things go wrong just to make sure that we don't take that minus 60 if we somehow die. After this we're usually playing edge of ring in order to stay away from teams and away from the big fights that can often lead to fourth and fifth parties, and we'll usually watch and assess all the fights that we can see, seeing if a third party would be a possibility or not, and if it is, we'll make sure to try and time it perfectly. When we do find ourselves in a position where we need to take a fair 3v3, the most important thing that we always try to do is make sure the fight lasts as short a time as possible, because obviously the longer the fight goes on, the way more likely it is that you're going to get third partied and overrun. Now when the team is on around 3 to 4 KP each, you can start thinking about the end game and trying to win the game, because obviously in order to win the game, you're still going to have to wipe that last squad or two, and at that stage, it's going to round you up to the 6 KP you need to get max RP. Now as we circle round to the next area that we're going to be talking about, that is going to be rotations for you guys. One of the main things you want to be thinking from the moment that you find yourself in the dropship above World's Edge is your rotation. A lot of that does depend on the ring and the zone and how it's going to pull in, but that doesn't mean that you can't start thinking about it the moment that you decide where you're going to drop. Having a plan in which way you're going to rotate through different POIs to loot at the start of the game and get to that end game position is a really good start. You should always do that at the start of the game. But having a strong IGL who can adapt to the changing rings and scenarios that are placed in front of you to help you rotate better is also really important. Having a character who can scan survey beacons helps you stay ahead of the next ring, making it so you can rotate earlier than other players and get those strong positions first. In previous seasons, the ring used to be way easier to predict, therefore you weren't necessarily needing a recon beacon character, as you could probably just predict the pull of the ring on your own. And while that can still happen now, the ring is way less predictable, and having that survey beacon knowledge is very useful in a lot of situations. And now we've reached the part of the video where we will talk about the art of the third party. This is the part of the video where we teach you uncultured swines how perfectly to third party. Now class, let me ask you, when third partying, do we third party before the fight is finished or after? If you said after, you're wrong. Everyone who has played ranked by now knows that the best way of engaging is to be the third party in a fight. By doing this, you're most likely going to be overwhelming your opponents after they've come out of a fight whilst they're still weak and potentially outnumbering them if one of them got knocked in the previous fight. That being said, it's crazy how many people still in Season 9 don't effectively know how to do it properly. When third partying any fight, you want to start approaching as soon as you see that there are knocks on either team especially if there are knocks on both teams. You can tell this by the kill feed. The timing of you attacking the opponents should always be the moment that they wipe or the moment before they wipe. Essentially, there is a small gap in between them wiping and healing up and shield swapping that you want to be pouncing on them. Third party too soon, and you could potentially have two teams focus you all at once, and before you know it, you've died before any of them have. Third party too late, and the opponents are going to have healed up and are going to be ready for you, so it's not going to be a third party anymore, but instead a fair 3v3. Now sometimes in Apex, fair 3v3s do present themselves, and you should be very careful about taking them. You need to assess the surroundings, where the ring is, and if any teams are likely to be nearby, waiting to third party. Keeping an eye on where exactly you are on the map can also help you determine whether or not you're likely to be third partied, Having a good game sense about where traffic goes on the map is also really important for this, so just knowing the areas that are usually hot and the areas that are usually less populated can be really helpful in helping you determine whether or not you should take that fair 3v3. I feel like this segues us on nicely to where we talk about game sense. In Ranked, there are so many times in which there are multiple squads in the area all waiting for another one to make the first move. It's in situations like this that having a good game sense can be the difference between you winning the game and losing the game. 
When you're in late game scenarios, the main focus needs to be on how you can win the game, not just about how to beat the next squad that faces you. For example, when it comes to late game, when two teams are fighting, you may be encouraged to third party, and in the late game that can still be the case, but in the late game the difference is that you may want to use that cover of those two teams fighting in order to rotate to the strongest position available to you. When two teams are fighting, it often leaves a strong position left alone or unmanned, and taking the opportunity to take that position from them whilst they're fighting can be the difference. You always need to be thinking about what every single team in the area is doing. Not just yourself, not just the people that you're seeing, but also the other squads that you're not seeing. The chances of you being third partied if you fight late game are incredibly high. So often it's best to try and wait it out for as long as possible to see if you can be the last team in to fight. That said, it's always down to your own personal scenario and own discretion. You shouldn't avoid pushing if you feel like it is definitely the right thing to do, but you do need to consider all options before just mindlessly throwing yourself at enemies to throw your game and their game. Next up, we're talking about the meta loadouts for Season 9. As a lot of you are probably already aware, there are three standout guns this season in terms of power, and two of them have already been nerfed. Those are of course going to be the Boshek Bow, the Spitfire, and the Peacekeeper. These are arguably some of the strongest ground loot weapons you can find in the game, and you're going to see a lot of them in ranked, even after the nerfs. That said, the weapon meta is arguably the most balanced it's ever been this season, and there are a lot of viable options you can run in your loadout. Personally, I prefer to run an assault rifle and an SMG if possible, because I feel like that offers me the most coverage for a map like World's Edge. The R301 and the Vault are probably my two favourite weapons to run on this map if possible. That said, there isn't a lot of energy ammo going around this season, so beware if you're using the Vault that you may find yourself low on ammo. The Sentinel is arguably the strongest sniper this season, and alongside the Bocek, you have good options for range. If you're going to be playing range, then I definitely recommend running an SMG alongside it. A shotgun doesn't quite offer the same versatility that an SMG does, and having that close range to mid-range potential with an SMG is going to help you if you're fighting at those ranges, and you don't really want to be pulling out your sniper rifle at those ranges. If you are someone who's going to run the Gamer Gun Spitfire, oof then definitely make sure you're running it alongside an SMG. It should always replace your assault rifle slot. You probably don't want to be running an assault rifle and an LMG because when it comes to close range, you're going to have a really slow strafe speed. I also briefly want to touch upon the mentality that you should have whilst playing ranked in Apex Legends. We all know it can be pretty brutal sometimes when you get three or four back-to-back -back negatives, especially early game. It can feel very deflating. If you're having a bad session, the key is definitely to not force it. Sometimes just stepping back and taking a break from ranked or just not playing for that day can make a big difference in terms of RP gains. If you find yourself having a bad session, then potentially look at changing up your team comp or your playstyle before getting frustrated, like that's the last thing you want to happen. And if you do find yourself getting frustrated, then do just take a step back from ranked. Trust me, I, I know there's nothing more frustrating than getting third partied by a Rev, Octane, Bloodhound, I mean, I just gives me nightmares thinking about it, honestly. Lastly, I do want to touch upon the DDoSing issue that is on console currently. A lot of you may have experienced this if you are in diamond lobbies or above. Basically what happens is the server will apparently crash, giving you a code net, and then if you press A, you're going to code leaf, and potentially even lose RP in some cases. This issue is happening because certain individuals are overloading the servers with packets, deliberately causing it to crash so that when they reconnect, everyone is going to be AFK and they can get free points. While you can rest assured that Respawn are working incredibly hard to make sure that this doesn't last a longer time, it's incredibly frustrating for them as well as us, there is a way that you can get around this problem, and if you find yourself being DDoSed, the key is to stay on this code net screen for approximately 2 minutes. After you've waited 2-3 to three minutes, if you reconnect, it should put you straight back into the game rather than giving you a code leaf. This will then allow you to play out the rest of the game, unless they decide to DDoS again. I did just want to bring this to your guys' attention because if you get DDoSed, I know how frustrating it can be, but this little workaround might save you a few points in the long run. So do make sure you give it the time to try and reconnect. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more regular Apex Legends content from myself, and let me know in the comments section down below where you want to finish this season in Ranked. I'll be really interested to see where you guys are aiming for. With all that being said guys, I hope you have a blast on World's Edge this split. I'll see you in the next video, take it easy, and goodbye.